Let's all stand and welcome Louis. Louis Ghetto to come and bring the word of God. Let's appreciate him. Let's appreciate this young man. Whoa. Hallelujah. Let's appreciate this young man. Hallelujah. Let's whisper a prayer for Louis. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, there is a word that Louis is carrying in his heart. We pray that, dear Father, that word will come forth, bringing blessing, bringing ministry, bringing restoration and healing and salvation and order in our lives. Therefore, the meditation of his heart and the words of his mouth, we pray that it will be acceptable to us as we listen. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God, church. Praise God again. So, uh, as you've heard, I'm Gitu. <laughs> Ian, Luis is my brother. I'm going to Form 4. I school at Starry Boys. But, more to that, I am a child of God. The Holy Spirit is my helper. And Jesus is not afraid to call me his brother. So, if I'm related that much to the Trinity, I believe that you are ready for the word. You are eager and zealous to hear it. So, uh, this, uh, before I introduce the word that I want to preach today, uh, I'd like us to read two portions of scriptures. Just to show us that uh, the word that I have here for today is for all of us. So, uh, Hebrews 11, 1 and 2. Media team, please, NKJV. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. Sorry. It says, uh, in the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. Continue. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom, through whom, through whom he made the universe. It says that uh, God, God is speaking to us by, by his son. And uh, if we look at John, John chapter 1, verse 14, it says that the word was made flesh, and he dwelt among us. So uh, in these last days, God is speaking to us through his word. And I'm about to share his word. So be attentive. And uh, I've titled my message, The Believer's Grace. And our guiding scripture will be Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. And uh, uh, in uh, this preaching, we'll be relating scripture with scripture. That is why I'm saying this is our leading scripture. Let us, uh, NKJV, please. Let us read together. Let's start again. Again, like you believe it. And I'm glad that uh, uh, over the last few weeks, uh, our church, we've been, uh, we've been taught about sonship, and we've come to understand that we are all sons in the kingdom. So this applies to us. So tag a neighbor and tell them, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Okay, turn to another one who looks like he believes more, tell them the same thing. <laughs> so uh, when we read this verse like this, there are two points that we can pick. One is that there is a grace that is, that is found in Christ Jesus. I thought there would be a, a hallelujah. <laughs> I'll repeat <laughs> There is a grace that is in Christ Jesus. And uh, the second thing is that Paul tells Timothy, be strong in it. So if he tells Timothy to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, it suggests that uh, if Timothy does not heed to this advice, he can be weak in the grace. But uh, Paul, Paul is encouraging Timothy. And uh, the way he encourages him is in this way. Uh, there's a word, therefore. And uh, therefore, in English... It is not just used anyhow. Therefore comes after a certain explanation. So Paul is telling Timothy, because of what I've told you, uh, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So we want to see what is this that Paul told Timothy so that he may be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And uh, as, uh, as I've said, this word is for us. So how, uh, what is God telling us? How, how should we be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus? So let us go back to uh, chapter 1, verse 13. Uh, of Second Timothy, chapter 1, verse 13. It 
says, Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you've heard from me in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. Verse 14. That good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. So Paul is telling, and then he, he, he gives Timothy uh, a brief uh, thing about uh, some people in Asia having uh, fallen from what Paul was, te- was teaching him. And then he speaks of on, on a sea for us who helped Paul a lot. And then he goes back to say, to tell Timothy, therefore, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So Paul is telling Timothy, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. How? Hold fast to what you heard me speak, and by the help of the Holy Spirit, uh, you, will, you will be strong in this grace. So uh, I want to share what, how I believe uh, choices come about. First is that you hear something, a teaching, what people say and such. And then it convicts you, and then you get a desire, and then this is how you, you come to make a decision. So uh, Paul, uh, Paul was with Timothy once, and uh, there are things that uh, Timothy had Paul speaking. So Paul, uh, when, when, when uh, Paul was speaking these things to Timothy, I believe that Timothy got the conviction, then he got the desire, and then uh, Paul wants him to make the, the decision to, to, be, to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And how? By the choices that uh, Timothy will make. So we want to see, why, why did Paul tell Timothy to hold fast the, part, the, to hold fast, uh, the pattern of good words which he had heard from him? So uh, first, we will refer to uh, James chapter 1, verse 22 to 25. It says, But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Uh, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. So uh, Paul is really putting the emphasis. Hold fast the pattern of sound words. It, uh, it is like Paul saying, take, pre- take preciously what you heard me say. And uh, another, another thing is, uh, it is because also Jesus, uh, Jesus also uh, hold, uh, he, he took the scriptures to, to heart. Uh, remember in uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse uh, 1 to 3, it says that, uh, seeing we also compassed about by a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and everything that easily entangles us. Uh, looking, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before us endured the cross and despised the shame, consider him who endured such thing, so that you may not grow weary and lose heart. So as believers, uh, the writer of Hebrews tells us that we should look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And uh, if you remember when Jesus was being tempted... How did he reply to the devil? It is written. And uh, you know, uh, the, the devil actually acknowledged Jesus. If you look at the, the three temptations of Jesus, he acknowledged Jesus as the son of God in two of the temptations. The first temptation and the second temptation. So he asked Jesus, if you are the son of God, do this. But Jesus just replied, it. Did he say, I think it is written? So uh, we can see that Jesus really understood the scripture. This is what I mean by, it is, it is meant by, hold fast the words that you've heard me speak. And uh, in the second temptation, uh, he, he didn't really say that if you are the son of God. But in the third temptation, he saw that Jesus understood scripture. So he told him, uh, if you are the son of God, uh, throw yourself down. For, he, for it is written that he will send his angels to guard over you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. But uh, what uh, Jesus really understood is that scripture must agree with scripture. So he told him, it is said, you shall not put the Lord your God to test. So we see that uh, scripture, must, must, uh, scripture must interpret scripture. There, there are no way in between. So if you see a, a, a scripture in this portion, and you see another in this portion, they, they, they must agree because all of it is the truth, isn't it? So, and uh, another thing, uh, when Jesus was finishing the Sermon on the Mount, let us go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. It says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Who's there? Uh, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings and does what? So it means that they've all had the saying. And uh, you see, when Paul was advising Timothy, he told him, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Timothy was already uh, a believer. 
but uh, Paul wanted him to be strong in the grace. So it, it really means that even when Jesus was speaking, he was speaking to people who wanted to hear, people who believed in his ministry. So he tells them, whoever hears this word and does them also. So you see, even it, uh, co uh, it coordinates with what we've read in, in the book of James, that do not be hearers only, but be also doers of the word. So, uh, and then another thing that Paul tells Timothy, let us go back to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 14. 2 Timothy 1, 14, sorry. Okay, it says that, guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. So Paul tells Timothy, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. How or why? Because you have, you have uh, the Holy Spirit and because of the word which you've heard me speak. So uh, we've, we've looked at why, why, why Paul told Timothy to look at the word. Now we want to check, why, why did he say the, the Holy Spirit? Let us turn to John 14, 26. It says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Now we see here that the Holy Spirit goes together with the word. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. So Paul is telling Timothy, uh, because of the Holy Spirit, who will also re remind you of the word, and uh, because of the word which you've heard, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. He's telling him that uh, because of the word and the Holy Spirit, you, you really do not have a reason why, should, why you shouldn't be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So uh, for the Holy Spirit to uh, have, a, have an influence in our lives, we need to create a conducive environment for him, for him to work. So we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. It says, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you are bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So the purpose of the Holy Spirit, we see in this context, is to bring glory to God. You see, for you are bought at a price. The price that was shed for you at Calvary, it uh, should uh, motivate you to live for Christ. There's a, there's a saying or a verse which says that, uh, dying for us was the most he could do, but living for him is the least we could do. So uh, our lives, once we commit our lives to Christ, we should, uh, we should allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives and uh, the, purpose, the purpose should be to glorify God. And how, how, how can we glorify God? Uh, let us look at uh, Romans 12, verse 1. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren. Let us read this one together. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, Holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So we are how, how we glorify God also in our in our bodies, in our spirit, and the way we lead our lives. So this is what uh, Paul is telling Timothy, and this is what God is telling us. Let us uh, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. How? Because the Holy Spirit, we have the Holy Spirit, and because of the Word which we have, and we've seen uh, uh, in context to the Word that we must uh, know the word, the way Jesus knew the word, and also, and also hold fast to it by knowing it. Uh, so we, we want to look at, uh, at an example of someone who was radical about grace. Remember our topic for today is the believer's grace. So we want to see how should we respond to this grace that is in Christ Jesus. Let us uh, turn to Second Corinthians chapter 12. So we shall read together. We start. It is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in body I do not know, or whether out of the body I do not know, God knows, 
such a one was caught up to the third heaven. And I know such a one, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows how he was caught up into paradise and had inexpressible words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one I will boast, yet of myself I will not boast except in my infirmities. For though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will speak the truth, but I refrain, lest anyone should think of me above what he sees me to be or hears from me, and lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Saturn to buffet me, lest I be exalted above me. Let us pause there. Uh, that thorn in the flesh, I was listening to a, a certain interpretation, and it is not that uh, Paul alikuwa mekosa pesa anatembea mgutupu. The interpretation is actually the, the tent stick, the one that is, that is used to, to peg the, the tent. Now it was, it was put in him. So let us continue. Concerning this, I, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather glory. So the, the only part where God speaks here is, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. So we understand that uh, Paul was, uh, was shown heaven, and uh, so that he, he might not think uh, of himself highly, he, he was given a thorn in the flesh, that tent stick. And uh, Paul, Paul knew that the Lord had allowed, had allowed it, the same way Job knew the same thing. So he, he asked the Lord uh, why, why this is happening. But uh, God, God did not answer him in the way that he expected him to answer. This is what uh, God says, back to verse 9. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. That is the part that God speaks. Those having the NIV, you'll see that. That is the only part written in red. And then what, how does Paul respond to this? How he, how he responds to this is, uh, is, uh, is phenomenal. He continues, it continues, Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So there is this tent stick that uh, is, in the, is in the flesh of Paul. And uh, Paul is asking God uh, why, why this is happening to him. But uh, once Paul hears that the word grace, that uh, God's grace is sufficient for him, he becomes radical about it. He says that he will, he will boast in his, in his infirmities. He says that uh, that is why for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I hope you are imagining the situation. Paul still has that, uh, has that pain and such and such. But uh, he has heard of the grace. And uh, he's told that my grace is sufficient for you. Then how he responds to it, uh, uh, it is just so awesome. That he says that when he is weak, he is strong that he will rejoice in infirmities. Remember James, when he wrote uh, his book, the book of James, uh, he says that, consider it all joy when you fall into temptations. When uh, infirmities strike and such, consider it joy and uh, uh, be strong because uh, God provides the strength. Back to uh, Paul writing to Timothy. So Paul, Paul does a phenomenal thing by telling Timothy, hold fast the pattern of good works then he tells him, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. After that, he says, uh, and uh, commit to faithful men uh, what you've heard me speak, who will also be able to, to teach others. So what Paul is literally telling Timothy is, uh, you've heard the word, and uh, once you get based on the word, you commit it unto others. That is, uh, that is simply speaking about the, 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 the commission, because... Paul is telling him to evangelize about Christ, the Great Commission. 
that uh, you've, heard, you've heard me talk about Jesus, what he has done, and uh, the fact that we should live for him. So he's telling him, now once you've, you've, you've gotten grounded in that, by the help of the Holy Spirit, by fellowship with the Holy Spirit, and by knowing the scriptures, I want you to commit it unto faithful men. Uh, so we see that Paul is, encourage, is really encouraging Timothy that uh, g get based in the word, teach others, and then uh, how it continues in verse 3. It says, and your hardships. So uh, Paul, what he, do, what he has done, it, he has encouraged uh, Timothy. And then uh, if, we, if, we, if we look still at uh, NKJV, it says, therefore, you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Christ. And we've seen that the word therefore, it is used after a certain explanation or teaching. So we've seen that Paul has told Timothy, uh, hold fast the, the, good, the words you've heard me speak by the help of the Holy Spirit. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And then commit unto faithful men. And then he tells him, you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Christ. And uh, for those who looked at uh, last week's bulletins, it spoke about that, how we should, uh, how we should live as, as, uh, as believers. So uh, we've, we've really gotten a tip here, how to endure hardship. How does it start? It is by uh, being rooted in the word uh, and uh, by the help of the Holy Spirit and also by evangelizing. And then you, you endure hardship. Because it puts it in the sense that you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Christ. Back to how Jesus finished the Sermon on the Mount. He says that uh, uh, if you hear, uh, those who hear and do what I've said, they will be likened to a wise man who built his house upon a rock. When, uh, let us just put it, verse 25. It is uh, Matthew 7, 25 there. That when infirmity struck, the house still stood. But what was, what was the foundation? The rock. So if we, if we relate these two portions of scriptures, we see that uh, if we have the word, if we have uh, the Holy Spirit and we are rooted in that, and then when infirmities strike, when uh, troubles come, uh, the, house, the house still stood. We will still stand. And uh, re remember I told you that Paul is telling Timothy, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. But it, there's also a point that he can be weak. If he does not hear, he will be weak. So verse 26, let us continue. Matthew 7, 26. But everyone who hears these things of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Continue. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it fell, and great was its fall. So uh, uh, if we liken what uh, the parable and uh, what Jesus spoke, both, both people had the word. If you we, if we assume there are two men, both people had the word. But one, one did not practice, practice it. And uh, this is what Paul is telling Timothy, that hold fast the words. And, and this is what God is telling us. Hold fast the words which we've heard and also have fellowship with the Holy Spirit and our foundation will be strong. We see that the one who had the word and did not do it, uh, the, 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 fall, the fall of the house was great. And uh, back to what we read in James, that uh, for those who, who hear the word and do not uh, do as it says, they are like uh, men who have uh, looked at the mirror and soon for, uh, he's like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. Uh, for he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. So uh, we are told that we should, we should learn to practice what the word says. It is not just about hearing, but uh, once we hear, we should practice what it says. But uh, Christianity is, is, uh, is, is so great because uh, once you hear the word, as I said, you'll get convicted and then you'll, you'll have the desire. Uh, in, this, uh, in the same way, uh, it, uh, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And uh, once you hear and hear the word, you, you'll, you'll get convicted to, to practice the word. So what we are really being told here is that if we hold fast what we, what we, are, being, what we, are, we are being told and, uh, and, and uh, hold it to heart and have, by, by the help of the Holy Spirit, we will be able to stand and we will be able to spread the gospel. And uh, when anything comes, when uh, the devil might try to bring his deceits, we, we will be able to stand against him. But uh, what is the foundation? 
the foundation is the word by the, by the help of the Holy Spirit. And you see here, uh, Paul is talking in the positive manner. And uh, God is telling us in the positive manner, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Remember the Israelites when they were in the wilderness. They were told that, uh, I set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Uh, no, it's, 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 I call the witnesses against you that I've set before you life and death, blessings and curses, but choose life so that you and your children may live. So uh, the Bible always encourages us in, in the positive, that we are being told to choose life. We are being told to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So uh, so with this, uh, so uh, as we come to a wind-up, uh, the singer in the song says that, I have decided to follow Jesus. So is this all our declarations today, that you have decided to follow Jesus? Jesus is saying that uh, in Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and uh, welcomes me, I will make my abode with him. And uh, uh, the writer of uh, Acts, Luke, he's, he tells us that salvation is by no one else because uh, there is no name under heaven by which we must be saved. So are you here and uh, you've heard that there is a grace in Christ Jesus, that uh, in Christ Jesus there is the word, and in Christ Jesus there is the Holy Spirit, and you'd like to commit your life unto him. Is there anyone? I encourage you to come in front. Jesus said that uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. And uh, the singer in the same song, he ends the song beautifully and asks, will you decide now to follow Jesus? So is there anyone in the congregation that has heard the message and uh, wants to commit their lives to Christ? If not, uh, we are still in the dispensation of grace. But uh, have we learned something today? <laughs> so just tell a neighbor what you've learned today. I'll hand it over to the service leader.